Most people don't give speeches every day. In fact, most people only do it a few times in their life. Maybe they're the best man or maid of honor at a wedding reception, or they're giving a speech at a company function, something like that. Now, when people put speeches together, they spend a lot of time trying to write an effective, maybe humorous speech that people will enjoy. It'll capture people's attention. That's a good thing. But what they don't do is take into consideration that the most important part of your speech is that people actually hear you and that's when this guy comes in, the microphone. I'm going to talk about how to use this microphone today. I already know what a lot of you are thinking. Brian, it's a microphone. You talk into it. How hard can this be? You'd be surprised. I hand this thing off to people on a weekly basis, be it the best man, maid of honor, father of the bride, father of the groom, CEO of a company, politicians. Even after explanation, nine times out of ten, they do everything I told them not to do. And I understand why. They're thinking about their speech. They spend a lot of time writing the speech and practicing the speech. They want to deliver it as effectively as possible. But it's not going to be that effective if nobody can hear you. I'm going to give you a long version of the directions I give people before I hand them the microphone. This is a dynamic microphone. It's designed to pick up sounds close to it. It's not necessarily designed to pick up sounds far away. It does, but not that clear. Kind of like if you're on the telephone and you hear somebody talking in the background. You can kind of hear what they're saying, maybe, maybe not, but it's not real clear. Same thing with this microphone. In fact, the further away this microphone gets from your mouth, the less people are going to be able to hear you over the speaker. I recommend that you put this microphone right about your chin level, right here. And the reason I do is because I think right in front of your mouth, is maybe not the right place. Notice when I say S's and T sounds, you can hear those a little more than you probably should be able to, and P's as well. I had a speech impediment as a little kid. I was in speech therapy for several years because I couldn't say an S. And I'm really insecure about my S's because I don't know if I ever nailed it perfect. So when it comes to those wind sounds, T's, P's, S's, I want that wind to go over the microphone I don't want it to hit directly on the microphone and amplify or maybe exaggerate those sounds. So if you hold it right here, all that wind goes right over and it does pick up your voice very nice. But what people do very often is this. They follow my directions at first and then things go wrong. And this is where it can go wrong on the DJ's end as well. Hello everybody and welcome to the ACA Music and Entertainment Holiday Party. We want to thank all of our artists and musicians who have made this a real successful year for all of us. Notice the microphone gets further and further away from my mouth, and by the way, that party has never happened, and that speech has never happened, but I regress. This is what can happen. When the microphone gets further away from your mouth, I as a DJ start to get worried, because you're looking at me like, what's wrong, nobody can hear me, you're screwing up, or your system's bad, or your microphone's broken. So what I try to do to save your speech, because it's important to me that you deliver a good speech and people can hear you, is I start making adjustments on my microphone EQ and I start trying to give you more gain. Now, this is a dynamic microphone. Like I said, it's designed to pick up sounds close to it and not really designed to pick up sounds real clear far away from it, although it can if you give it a lot of gain. But the problem with a lot of gain is you can get feedback very easily with this. What is feedback? I'm going to show you. That's feedback. That is the speaker and the microphone interacting and creating a nasty sound that you don't want. The more gain you give to the microphone, the more these two things get connected and the better chance you have of getting feedback and that's never a good thing. So you want to keep your gain levels as low as possible and you got to keep in mind you're in front of the speaker now. When the DJ is doing his thing behind the speakers, usually he's behind the speakers, he doesn't have to worry about the gain as much and the feedback as much, but when you're in front of the speakers, which is where most of you are delivering your speeches, feedback can happen. It's sensitive. This is very sensitive. If you give it too much gain, you're going to get it. Sometimes, no matter how nice the speakers are or how great the microphone is, you can still have feedback issues, and a lot of things can contribute to this, including just poor room acoustics. So here are some tips. What you want to do is avoid line of sight between the microphone and the front of the speaker. So you got to create barriers somehow. Here's one thing you can do. You can stand 
beside the speaker or behind it, line of sight is blocked. Another thing you can do is create a physical barrier between this mic and the speaker by using your body. Use your body. Get right in front of the speaker, have the microphone on the other side of you, no line of sight. If you pace around a lot when you're giving speeches, which I do sometimes, what you can do is simply point the microphone away from the speaker as you're passing it, like this, and then start talking again. Kind of know where your spots are, where you might have a problem. You'll notice professionals do this quite a bit. So there are some mic tips for you. I hope this helped. I hope someone who's watching this video gets it. Please keep this in mind. I know you've got a lot to think about when you're giving speeches, but this is just as important as what you say because it ain't going to be effective if nobody can hear you. Practice and enjoy.